Hey everyone, I'm Parker, co-founder of Deco Exchange. Ever been told that crafting is just a hobby? Well, we've turned our passion for crafting into a thriving eight-figure business, surrounded ourselves with an incredible community, and learned countless valuable lessons along the way. From navigating business challenges to celebrating wins, we've seen firsthand that makers mean business. Join me as we dive deep into these stories, strategies, and secrets behind making your craft a successful enterprise. Because here at Makers Mean Business, we're all about proving that makers aren't just making, they're building dreams and running businesses. What is up, you guys? It is Parker here with the Makers Mean Business podcast. Yo, we are back for a new series. I've been going back and forth about what I want to talk about next and what I thought would be important or add value. And what I finally landed on was shipping. We're going to talk a little bit about shipping. So I don't have the total list of episodes that I'm going to do for this. I think it's going to be somewhere between five and seven different episodes all about shipping. Uh, But for this first episode, I really just want to talk just a little bit about the general idea of shipping as a handmade business, talk about some of the struggles that we have, talk about some of the, I guess, like the terminology or like the basics or just to give y'all an idea and kind of catch you up to speed. I know some of our listeners, they ship a lot, they sell a lot of stuff and they just listen for uh, inspiration and nuggets and that kind of stuff. And some of you guys have never, never made your first Etsy sale yet, which is totally fine too. So I want to get everyone up on the same page about what, what I guess my, my experience is with shipping, my thoughts about it, my, my, I guess my struggles, the things that we've learned along the way. If you guys are just listening for the first time, if you've never really heard our story, um, we do a lot of shipping now, you guys, we have our own warehouse. We ship usually between eight and 12,000 packages a month. It's not just wreaths. We sell craft supplies. So we sell a lot of, uh, raw material. We also do ship out wreaths, we ship out door hangers, we ship out dog shampoo, we ship out tumblers, we ship for three other companies now that it's not really important what it is, but we have a lot of packages going out. So we see a lot of different problems. We see a lot of things that work and don't work. And we also just learned a lot along the way. I wanted to share some of that with you guys in this first episode and we can talk. But the first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about just the overall logistics and process and and what happens. If you've never made a sale before, you're not really sure what happens once you make a sale, we can talk a little bit about the general process. For the purpose of this, I think I'll just assume like you're you're making a sale on Etsy. So the first thing you really, in in terms of shipping, what you're going to want to do is find a box. You're going to want to find a box that actually fits the product. We get these questions a lot. And I, I just laugh because it's hard to answer without seeming like a a smart ass or a jackass or whatever you want to call me. People ask, what size do you ship your wreaths in? It depends. We have a lot of different box sizes. And the reality is you may make a product that's completely different than the product that Damon makes or I make or we ship. So you really have to use your own judgment. I've pulled out a tape measure before and got some ideas of what's the the dimensions of the thing that you're shipping. So there's not really a, a one size fits all answer. The best thing I can tell you when you're trying to decide the the box size and, and all that is put it in the smallest box that you can without ruining the customer experience. And I say that with the customer experience part because, uh, you know, you can smash a wreath into a tiny little box and it'll save you a few bucks on shipping. But if the customer gets it and it doesn't look like what they bought, then you're going to have a bad time. They're going to have a bad time. Everyone's going to really have a bad time. So you want to be very cognizant about preserving whatever it is you're trying to ship. Putting something in too big of a box is not good. Putting something in in too small of a box is also not good. So keep keep that in mind. But y'all, I'll be, I'll admit it. I went on a tangent there for a second. So I'm trying to pull myself back because I can talk a lot more about the intense details of like how do you pack and all that stuff in another episode. As far as like a step one, step two, step three process, uh, you're going to want to get a box. You're going to want to put the items that you get in the box. You're going to want to get a label and then you're going to want to get that to the shipping carrier. So that there's like the four major steps along the way, right? So get the box, get the item in the box, get the label, get the box to the carrier. So we're going to, we're going to talk about in detail all those different parts, but that's the gist of what is shipping? What does that look like? What do I need to do? What are my responsibilities? It's really those four. Another frequently asked question or another thing that might be on your mind is like, who do you ship with? And again, we'll go into a huge amount of detail with all of that kind of stuff. Personally, 
unless the customer selects a certain type of shipping whenever they're checking out with us, we ship with the cheapest carrier. We typically use three carriers. We being Deco Exchange, we personally use three carriers. And honestly, they're split usually on a normal month. It's usually like 40, 30, 40%, 30%, 30%, or 30, 30, 30, or 33, 32, 33. It's usually pretty evenly split, honestly. Those three carriers are USPS, which is the good old post office, FedEx, and UPS. So one question you might be thinking either now or you've thought before is, oh, which one do I use? It depends, again. <laughs> honestly, that's why we're going to have so many different episodes because it really, it varies. There's so many different options. There's so many different variables. Like I was saying earlier, we ship with the cheapest carrier unless the customer selects a certain type of shipping when they're checking out. We do have a free shipping on our website over a certain dollar value. So that kind of gives us the power to select the cheapest rate. Now, that being said, they're, all of the carriers are not made equally. They don't provide the same type of service. They don't provide the same level of service. They don't provide the same transit dates. They don't provide the same amount of customer service. It's all different, and they're all, they all have their strengths and weaknesses, in my opinion. Not sponsored by any of them. I don't have any kind of ties to any of them. It just really depends on uh, the situation, and for us, it's what's the cheapest. So you might be asking, how do you decide which one's cheapest? There is software out there that can help you. We call it rate shopping, and we'll talk about that in another episode too. But there's three very simple factors, and, and there's a couple other factors that play into it too that are a combination of these factors. But the th- three biggest things that will affect the cost of shipping, the size, the weight, and the distance. So depending on how big your box is, how heavy the box is, and how far the box is going to go, that really decides the cost. And to tie this back to the actual carriers, each kind of carrier in in our case, you know, I'm, I'm trying to add general information that adds value to you, but it also, it, all of this stuff isn't set in stone. Just to add another layer of complexity, you can get what's called negotiated rates and have these carriers give you certain deals on certain types of boxes. Consider that whenever I'm, I'm talking about all the pricing and everything. Uh, so let's take a step back to where I was before I had to add that disclaimer. The size of the box, the weight of the box, and the distance of the box. Especially if we group USPS separately from FedEx and UPS. In general, the post office is really a great option when you have something small and lightweight. FedEx and UPS are typically, you get better prices than the post office if you have bigger stuff, bigger, heavier stuff. The distance doesn't seem to play, in in my experience, doesn't seem to play as big of a deal. It's mostly the size and the weight of the box. So typically, if you have something small and lightweight, you probably want to look at the post office rates and those will most likely be the better rates for you. If you have something bigger and heavier, it's probably going to be better to look at FedEx or UPS rates. So yeah, I know I'm throwing a lot of information out there, but I want to give you the the general basics so we can have a, a more in-depth discussion that we can talk about the, the nuts and bolts of everything. So now that we talked a little bit about what the costs are determined by, what the carriers are, what the general process looks like, I feel like y'all have a general idea of what we're going to be talking about now. There's one more term that I want to throw out there. And for the lay person for the normal you're shipping a few boxes a month maybe a couple a week it's not a huge deal but as your business continues to grow and as you start talking to these different carriers and trying to talk about uh, p- the potential for negotiated rates or how do you get better rates they're going to start talking about this thing called dimensional weight and dimensional weight is just it's basically just a formula it's a number that combines the size of your box and the weight of your box together and they use this idea of dimensional rate to normal or sorry dimensional weight to normalize how they price your items so they have a dim they call it a dim weight factor and that factor is assigned to you and your account if you have a negotiated rate with them so you want to get the best dim weight that you can and one again this is a really advanced thing but uh, if you're shipping a lot it's worth talking to the to carriers and seeing what it is i would spend some time looking at dim weights and understanding it so when you have these conversations you can speak the same language 
Y'all, with that being said, I want to end this first episode here. I knew, I know I threw a lot of information. I talked about step one, step two, step three. I think there was step four too of what shipping actually looks like, what you're actually responsible for. I talked about what actually controls the the price of of labels and of shipping. I talked about the different providers that there are out there, or at least the three that we use. There's plenty. There's tons of them out there, y'all. And then I talked a little bit about dim weight. Y'all, I know dim weight is a, a complex idea. So if it threw you off, don't worry too much about it. You can worry about that at a later time. If you've never shipped your first box, dim weight is not going to mean anything to you. So keep that in mind. But y'all, with that being said, I'm going to go into more detail about, I think we're going to talk about actual boxes and, and, and packaging next episode. So if that is of any interest to you, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. You can listen to Makers Mean Business on any of your your podcast apps, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, you can find us. Just search for Makers Mean Business. Y'all, I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you, whether you first episode, last episode, keep listening to every episode. I appreciate you. I, I make these for you, so I hope I add value. And if I do, feel free to leave us a review, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, y'all.